Hello and welcome to another mathematics video in which we uh, continue in our quest to solve ordinary differential equations. And until now, um, in the last few weeks and months, uh, we've been looking at some Riccati equations, which are actually non-linear equations. And we've looked previously at other types of non-linear equations as well. Um, but on this particular occasion, I thought we'd sort of have a break from that and look at this linear ordinary differential equation in equation one and um, attempt to find a solution to it given these initial conditions here. Now, I've chosen equation one because these substitutions, p equals dy by dx and d squared y by dx squared equals dp by dx and d squared y by dx squared equals p dp by dy don't work in this equation, not initially anyway. And the reason is that if we substitute any of these into that equation one, we end up with three variables. Um, as I've written down here, we end up with x, y, and p. And we're only allowed two variables um, in an ordinary differential equation, namely, an independent variable, <coughs> excuse me, and a dependent variable. So in this particular case, the independent variable is y and the dependent variable is x. Um, this is linear <coughs> because we have no uh, non-linear terms. So for example, if we had a y in place of the coefficient x minus 1, that would be a non-linear equation. If any of these derivative terms were squared, or, or even if the y here were to be squared, that would make it non-linear. If this minus x coefficient uh, of y prime were a y itself, so if we had minus y times y prime, that would make it non-linear. But in this particular case, all we've got for coefficients are x um x is like x minus one and x and all the other derivative terms and y itself are all linear so um, as i've said um we have got y on its own uh, it's not y squared or anything like that we've not got y prime squared we've not got y double prime squared there so that makes it um as i said so that this means we're dealing with a linear equation uh, and in order to solve it, um, we have to do something else because these substitutions won't work. So what are we going to do to solve equation one? Well, what I'm going to do first is actually cut and paste our question. So let's just let's just uh, cut and paste that. Right. So okay. Now we'll go to a new page. And if I put that up there, we've got a bit more room to work now. So what we're actually going to do um, to solve equation one is we're going to differentiate it once with respect to x. So we're going to, as I said, we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we'll write down the equation inside the brackets once more. Um, and uh, just for notation reasons, we'll actually show what we're doing on the right hand side, which is to differentiate zero. But you should know what that is. It's just zero. Right. So. If we differentiate all of this in brackets, we get, well, d by dx of, uh, and we'll just highlight it in red, d by dx of this term here can be obtained by using the product rule. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll write down what that becomes. So first of all, we leave the x minus 1 alone and we differentiate the y double prime. So we've got x minus 1, y double prime. You could have multiplied everything out there, but you're not gaining anything or achieving anything by, 
by doing that. Uh, you still have to use the product rule. And then the next part is to leave the y double prime alone and differentiate the x minus 1 in the brackets, which becomes 1. And it's plus uh, y double prime. Um, in actual fact, I made a mistake because, like I said, if you just go back through this again, we've got dy by dx of x minus 1, y double prime. So we leave the x minus 1 term alone. And we differentiate the y double prime, we should have y triple prime there, right? Y triple prime. Uh, I'm messing it up, aren't I? So I make these glaring errors, so watch out. And then we can continue by saying, well, if we differentiate the x minus 1, we leave the, um, we get 1 and we leave the y double prime alone, so we've got that. Then we differentiate. The minus x y prime. So what have we got? Well, um, I'm going to put uh, another bracket around this because there's a minus sign there. Now, um, if we uh, differentiate the x and leave the y prime alone, we've got uh, y prime. So x just differentiates to one leaving y prime and then if we leave the x alone and differentiate the y prime we get y double prime right and then of course we've got the d by dx of y which is plus dy by dx and that's equal to zero so we'll call that equation two for now right so we can tidy this up and so if we multiply everything out, we've got, um, let me just see, uh, right, we'll leave the x minus 1 times y triple prime there, plus y double prime, minus y prime, we're, we're getting rid of this bracket now, uh, minus x y double prime, plus this, um, I actually call that dy by dx, didn't I? Anyway, we'll call it y prime, because you know that. It's just me making little errors as I go along, not, not recognising always what I'm doing. Uh, it's what I do, I'm afraid. Uh, so let's get rid of that stylus. Uh, now, what you'll notice is that a couple or so terms cancel. We've got a minus y prime there that cancels with the plus y prime. And um, we can now collect a couple of terms together. We've got a y double prime term here, and we've got um, an x y double prime term here. So what we do is we will just do this in green. So we've got x minus one y triple prime. Um, and I'm going to put the minus x y prime there plus the y double prime, and that's equal to zero. Now, I'm actually going to do this here instead of going on to another page right at the moment. What I'm actually going to do is um, put a bracket uh, round these terms. So that has the effect of uh, where's my uh, red pen? There we are. That has the effect of putting a minus sign there. Um, but also we can factor out this y double prime term. So um, we'll try and squeeze it in here at the bottom. So we've got this x minus 1 term here, y double prime, minus x minus 1, y double prime equal to 0. OK? Right. So now you should be able to see what we can do quite easily. Uh, let's go on to the next page. So we'll write that down again. Um, 
new page. So we've got x minus 1, y triple prime, this is where I make mistakes, minus x minus 1, y double prime equals 0. Let me just check that. x minus 1, y double prime, and we'll call that equation, I can't remember what I've just seen. Right, okay, so we'll call that equation 3. Right, now we can cancel the x minus 1. And what we're left with is y double prime, uh, sorry, y triple prime minus y double prime equals 0. Now, we'll call that equation 4. Now, I'm going to rewrite it in terms of... Um, um, let me see, Newton and Leibniz, Leibniz, Leibniz notation, yeah, which is d cubed y by dx cubed minus d squared y by dx squared equals zero. We call this equation five. Now, why have I written it like that? Well, first of all, we can factor out a d by dx. So we get d by dx, and we factor it out, leaving um, inside the bracket d squared y by dx squared minus dy by dx. Okie doke, and that's equal to zero. So integrating this, uh, we'll call it equation six, we get... Well, we're integrating with respect to x, so we're left with d squared y by dx squared minus dy by dx equal to a constant a. Right? We've integrated both sides of equation 6. Uh, now we are not finished. Um, let's bring the stylus back because I want to cut and paste. Uh, this equation. Uh, right. Um, and I really want to give it some. Let me just um, close that down a minute. We'll call this equation 7. There we are. That's what I wanted to do. Right now, let's cut and paste it once again. Right. Add to new page, okay. So we could do the same again. So factoring out a d by dx term, we have inside the brackets d y by dx. Well, that is not a good d, is it? Uh, d y by dx minus y right equal to a now we haven't integrated it yet uh, we'll call that equation eight uh, so if we integrate both sides we get on the left hand side we're left with dy by dx minus y equal to a x plus b right now we're getting somewhere we'll call this equation nine okay now to solve this equation in uh, on both sides uh, well to solve equation nine there's only really one immediate way or one simple way that i can see um i'm the probably i don't know if there are any more without um looking at it in greater detail but what we're going to do is solve it using the integrating factor method so an integrating factor is e to the minus let me just make a little bit more room. Um, and actually, um, we'll, um, let's just get rid of the stylus uh, when I can find my, there we are. We'll write this in red. So we've got an integrating factor of e to the power of minus the integral of dx. And that simply comes out to be e to the minus x, right? So we 
write down this equation again, dy by dx. Uh, and of course, we multiply the e to the minus x by both sides of it. So we've got e to the minus x dy by dx um, minus uh, y e to the minus x equal to a x e to the minus x plus b e to the minus x. Right. Now then, um, I'm going to cut and paste that again. So, uh, uh, that should be all right. Missed a little bit off there, but we'll we'll rectify that in a moment. So we've got this. Let's just try and uh, I like to get it absolutely exact. There we are. Uh, right. So that is an x term up there. Now, on the left hand side, we can write d by dx because we factor out that d by dx effectively. And what we've got inside the brackets is e to the minus x times y. So you always take this value inside the brackets, always take this value here and this value, not the other e to the minus x. We've already done that over here. So it's e to the minus x times y. And that's equal to ax e to the minus x plus b e to the minus x. Now we haven't integrated it um, yet. So we go ahead and integrate. So we're left with e to the minus x y equal to the integral of, we'll put the a outside the integral sign. We've got x e to the minus x dx plus b times the integral of e to the minus x dx. Um, and of course, I'm going to put the constant in now, just in case I forget it. Um, there's a constant of integration, which we'll call c. Right. Now, um, we have to integrate. Uh, this part by parts. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. So uh, let's use red. So we've got u equal to x so that u prime equals 1 and v therefore is equal to e to the minus x at, uh, sorry, v prime is equal to e to the minus x, and therefore v is equal to minus e to the minus x. You're just integrating this e to the minus x to get minus e to the minus x. So, um, we, we're just dealing with this part in brackets at the moment. So, what we've got on the left hand side is e to the minus x times y, that's this bit here. And that's equal to a times, well, first of all, for integration by parts, we've got u times v. So that's x times minus e to the minus x. So we've got a minus x e to the minus x there. And then we've got minus another integral to write down. Well, we've already um, because we've got x times e to the x here, we know that that would be x times e to the minus x there. So that was u times v prime in in under the integral side. So that's u times v prime. So the only other integral that remains is u prime times v, or we could say v times u prime, which is 1 times minus e to the minus x. But we've already got a minus sign here, so it becomes a plus uh, integral of e to the minus x dx. And then we've got our plus b times the integral of e to the minus x, which is a minus b e to the minus x plus uh, c, the c 
stasis is because we're not we've all that's already a constant of integration we've already done that part of the integration now all that remains is for us to just tidy up uh, uh well we need to integrate this component here first um and and just tidy the whole expression up so we've got um equals a times in brackets minus x e to the minus x minus e to the minus x um we don't add on a constant here if we did it just become part of this constant over here so there's no need it, it's it's unnecessary so what we've got um in the bracket is that plus b e to the minus x plus c now then i'm I'm going to cut that, and I'm just going to get rid of, uh, there we are, it's not, uh, let me see, cut and go to another page, right, okay, so um, we just got to make sure we've got all the variables in there, let me just check, yeah, right, now, so, we can just before we start doing anything else we can, we can very basically um let's just go back to black uh we can start to simplify the bit in brackets so we've got e to the minus x y on the left hand side equal to minus uh a times in brackets um x plus one times e to the minus x i hope i've got that right uh plus b e to the minus x oh let me just no uh, let's just do that bit need to get uh plus c right okay uh where do we get up to in terms of e equations let's have a look so previous ah so we want an equation 10 right so we'll call this equation 10 now to simplify um all of this equation uh we divide through by e to the minus x so that gives us um and i'll write in green this time y equals minus a times x plus one tell you what uh let's just put curly brackets in rounded brackets a times x plus one uh well because we're dividing this e to the minus x by this e to the minus x on both sides uh that disappears there um the e to the minus x disappears here as well leaving us with b and then, of course, we've got plus C over E to the minus X. Uh, but that simply, uh, we can move this E to the minus X up to the top to get E to the X. C, E to the X, right? And that is the general solution, okay? Um now we have some initial conditions we said that when well we just write them down here again so when uh i ought to go back to black ink i think uh and then we can stay reasonably consistent so we've got y of zero is equal to minus two um and y prime of zero is equal to zero ah but there's a problem we need another initial condition we need y double prime but then that would give us a solution to the third order equation that we got by differentiating the first second order equation it's actually the first second order equation that we want to solve so that means we've got one constant too many in this general solution. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to multiply everything out on the right hand side here. Um, because um, we've got uh, y equals minus a x uh, minus a plus b plus c e to the minus x. Um, now then, um, we could call this minus a plus b a different constant. Um, we'll call it, when we label all the constants, we'll relabel this minus a as minus a 1x. Uh, we'll label this minus a plus b as plus b1. I could have called them a1 and b2. Anyway, we're, we're calling uh, this constant a1 and this uh, addition of constants here b1. And then we'll call uh, the c e to the minus x, c1 e to the minus x. Okay? Now, two out of three of these solutions are the linearly independent solutions of the first second order. So this is the set, the original second order equation. So I'll just write that down. Uh, let's go um, to the next page. So. Three of the solutions. Uh, sorry, I'm getting it wrong again, aren't I? So, two of the three solutions. Um, I should say linearly independent solutions. Linearly independent solutions forming equation previous. So we'll call this equate. Oops. We'll call this equation. Oops. I can't write straight at all, can I? So we'll call this equation 11. So, uh, two of the three linearly independent solutions forming equation 11 are solutions of um, x minus 1 at y double prime minus x y prime uh, plus y equals 0. And we're going to call that equation one again. Right, two of the three linearly independent solutions forming equation 11 are solutions of equation one. Well, how do we know this? Well, let's write them down. We've got y1 equals, I have to look at what I've done here. y1 is equal to minus a1x minus a1x. y2 is equal to, uh, well, we call it b1. b1. And uh, y3 is equal to uh, c1 e to the minus, actually that should be a plus x, shouldn't it? See what I've done? I've rewritten this equation I've rewritten this equation here and substituted minus in for the x. That should be a plus. So I'll just um, I'll just rewrite it as a plus there. You have to watch me. I'm afraid I make these blunders. So c e to the x. Okay. Now what we do is um, we take this y one term and we'll differentiate it twice so that uh, y1 prime 
is equal to minus a1, and y1 double prime is equal to zero. Uh, right, so if we substitute y1 and all its derivatives into equation one, what we get is, well, uh, let me uh, write in green over here. What we get is x minus one, x minus one times y double prime, which is zero, minus x times y prime, which is minus a one. So that's plus, um, let me just um, rewrite it as plus a one x um, plus y. Well, we know that y is minus a one x minus a one x. And what do we get? We get zero when we add everything together. And of course, the equation on the left hand side has to be equal to zero. So we know that a1x is a solution because it satisfies equation one. It equates the left hand side to zero, as shown here. And this is also zero, uh, just by virtue of the fact that y double prime is zero. So we know that, and I'll ring it in green, we know that that is a solution. Um, now, for the sake of showing you how to do this, I'm going to go to y3, because this y3 is a solution as well. Uh, but I'm showing you that because I want to show you the one that doesn't work, last of all, which is y2 equal to b1. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you why that isn't the solution of um, equation one. So let's just get rid of all this green working here and find the derivatives of y3. So we've got y3 prime is equal to ce to the x. And y double prime is equal to c e to the x. And I think I said, actually, it has to be c1. It doesn't really matter. That's just notation. So we substitute each one of these back into equation one. So we'll do it in green again. I'll just do it down here. Um, so we've got x minus one in brackets. Uh, times, well, we've got a C1 e to the x minus x times C1 e to the x, C1 e to the x uh, plus y. Uh, so that's plus C1 e to the x. And so we work that out and um, we find if we multiply out the brackets here, we get C X, well, C one, isn't it? C one X E to the X minus C one E to the X uh, minus C one X E to the X. That's this term here plus c1 e to the x and as you can see that cancels with that because one's positive one's negative and where's my pointer gone that is a negative of that so it comes out uh to be equal to zero as required right so we now know that both y1 equals minus a to the uh, a times x and y3 equal to c1 e to the x are the linearly independent solutions to equation one that we require. Now, let me show you why y2 equal b1 is not a solution of equation one. And bear in mind, Whatever the order of the equation, you can, oh, like, for example, an nth order ordinary differential equation always has n linearly independent solutions. 
So this second order linearly, um, or this second order ordinary differential equation can only have two linearly independent solutions. A third order ODE will have three linearly independent solutions. A fourth order ordinary differential equation will have four linearly independent solutions, and so on. Uh, that's why um, these um, linearly independent solutions here, when added together, will give the general solution to equation one here. So let me just undo this working in green, because rather than going onto another page, it's just simpler to um, make use of the, the space here. So um, if we go uh, and click on black again, then we can see that if y2 is equal to a constant, then uh, and the constant is b1 in this case, then y1 prime is equal to zero, and y1, uh, it's actually y2, isn't it? Uh, so if y2 is equal to b1, y2 I think I've just done something to the screen, but never mind. Uh, so y2 prime is equal to zero, and uh, y2 double prime is equal to zero. Right? Now, uh, if we substitute all of these um, back into equation one, we get, well, we'll turn back to green for this, we get x minus one, uh, well, we know that y2 double prime is zero, so that's zero, uh, minus x times y prime, uh, well, y2 prime, which is zero, times zero, uh, plus b1. But that is equal to, well, this goes to zero, and this just goes to zero, but the b doesn't. We don't know what the, the B1 is. Um, so it's obviously not a solution of equation one. So the general solution um, let me go on to the next page and choose back. So the general solution to equation one is uh, y equal, uh, and I have to look at what we've got there, c1 e to the x, c1 e to the x minus a1 x. Let me just um, go back, yeah. Now, um, back to the initial conditions. When y of, well, when x is zero, y is equal to minus two, and uh, when x is zero, dy by dx is equal to zero as well. So we have to do now. Let's just go back to previous. So uh, I want to give our equation a label. So we'll call it equation. Whoops. Call it equation twelve. Uh, so we have to differentiate equation 12 because we've got two constants. We can't determine both of them um, unless we differentiate. So dy by dx is equal to c1 e to the x minus a1. So let's work this out um, in this little corner of the screen and um, so what we've got is when x is zero y is minus two so we substitute those into equation 12 
So when x is 0, we have c1 e to the 0 o minus a 1 times 0. And that's equal to minus 2. The minus 2 is equal to c1 e to the 0 minus a1 times 0. So at least we get one of the constants out of this. So that is that can be simplified to give minus 2 equals c1. Uh, and then this is, this is just 0. So c1 equals minus 2. Right now, in uh, the we didn't label this equation, did we? Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just rub that line out, um, and um, we'll just extend this green line over here and go back to black. I would call that equation 13. So from equation 13, uh, we can see that um, this is the derived result of the general solution. And we need the derived result of the general solution because one of our initial conditions states that dy by dx is zero when x is zero. So dy by dx over here, um, we'll do this in green when I can find my pointer. dy by dx is zero, and that's equal to c1 e to the zero minus a1. So c1 minus a1 equals zero. But we know what c1 is. Because uh, that's down here, c1 is equal to minus 2. So we've got minus 2 minus a1 equals 0. So we can see that a1 equals minus 2. So c1 equals minus 2, a1 equals minus 2, if I've not made any mistakes. So what is a general solution? Uh, OK, um, let's just bring our stylus back and we'll cut. Um, we'll cut equation 12 and move on to another page. So C1 is minus 2 and A1 is minus 2. If I haven't made any mistakes and you you'll have to work through it yourself to ensure um that if i have made any mistakes you can you know what they are and how they've been made and how to rectify those issues so uh we've got y equal to well c1 is minus two and that's times e to the x and a1 is minus two so we've got minus a minus 2 times x. So this simplifies to give the particular solution of y equals 2x minus 2e to the x. Or if you like, y equals 2 times x minus e to the x. Okay, and that's how it is done. So um, you can verify the each of these linearly independent solutions are still um, solutions of the original second order equation, if you wish. Um, but that's what we found here, um, a general solution um, in equation 12 and a particular solution in what we will now call equation 13. So there you are, and I hope that was okay, that you've uh, learned something from that, and that you will come back for more. So until I see you next time, I'll bid you farewell, and see you soon. Bye.